okay we have already talked about the payback period method and we have discussed problems associated with it in this video we'll talk about the discounted payback period method the only difference between this method and the normal payback period method is that in the discounted payback period method you discount the cash flows let's go ahead and figure this problem out we have this project which requires an initial investment of one thousand dollars and promises you five hundred dollar cash flows for three years you get five hundred dollars in year one and in year two and also in year three now for the payback period method you can see that the first two cash flows add up to thousand dollars which is our initial investment right so two years is the payback period but we'll discount these cash flows for the discounted payback period method we already know the present value of an investment formula which is pv is equal to ct divided by one plus r raised to the power t where t is the number of periods c is the cash flow in that particular period and r is the interest rate the interest rate is given to be as 10 percent so for year one the cash flow again is remained 500 and the interest rate is 10 percent so that's just 0.1 so it'll be 1 plus 0.1 raised to the power 1 which turns out to be equal to 454.54 similarly for year two it's going to be 500 Point 0.1 raised to the power 2 since it's period 2 and that turns out to be equal to 413.22 dollars and finally for year 3 you have 500 divided by 1 plus point 0.1 raised to the power 3 which turns out to be equal to 375.66 dollars so you add the cash flows for the 3 years and clearly this sum is greater than a thousand dollars so our discounted cash payback period is less than three years and we need to figure out exactly by how much so let's add up the cash flows from year one and year two we add up the cash flows and i'm just <laughs> notifying it like this you're going to end up getting 867.76 dollars and then we subtract this amount from thousand dollars which comes out to be thousand dollars again is our initial investment and this is equal to 132.24 dollars now we still need to pay 132.24 dollars in the third year and the third year actually pays you 375.66 dollars so we need to figure out the fraction of time we need from the third year to complete the payment for that we'll just divide 132.24 with by 375.66 and that fraction comes out to be 0.35 so the discounted payback period is two years for the first two years of cash flows and 0.35 of the third year. So that's 2 plus 0.35 or 2.35 years. If, you, if you're not clear about the process where the payback period is not a whole number, you can watch the payback period video where I solve the example for the first time. Now the process of deciding whether to accept or reject is similar. If the cutoff date is greater than the payback period, we'll accept the project. Otherwise, we'll reject it. Let's assume the cutoff date to be three years. Clearly, we should accept the project since the cutoff date is more than the discounted payback period. Hopefully, you're seeing the point now. It's the exact same thing payback period and discounted payback period. The only difference is in the discounted payback period method, you actually end up discounting the cash flows. Now, the discounted payback period method has almost similar issues to the payback period method. It does not consider the order of cash flows into account. It does not consider payments after the payback period and so on. In fact, if you think about it, discount period, discounted payback period method is just one step away from the net present value method. All that is remaining for you to do is add the cash flows, which you have already discounted. And adding is the easier part, right? So the discounted payback period method takes the simplicity of the payback period method and it's still not the superior net present value method kind of like the worst of both worlds anyway hope you got around that and i'll see you in the next one